Hey there chameleons! Today I'm doing one of my favorite things, which is dyeing my hair, and I'm doing one of my favorite styles, which is half and half, and I'm gonna show you all my best tips and tricks on how to get a half and half look at home without any help and show you how I usually do it. So first, I always start with bleached hair so I can get the color to show up more vibrantly on top. And it's up to you to decide how light you want your hair to start out before you dye it. And that's what's going to decide the intensity and brightness of the color you're putting on top. Basically for this, I did two rounds of bleach and I didn't use any toner to get the yellow tones out because I chose colors that are dark enough that will show up just fine on this base. And I wanted to do as few processes to my hair as possible, so skipping toner was the perfect way to do that. But of course, it's still all just up to you. Next, you wanna part your hair vertically in half. The two dyes I'm using are the Garnier Nutrice Nourishing Permanent Hair Color Cream in Spiced Plum, which is a beautiful deep purple, and Teal Forest, which is exactly the color that it sounds like. Each box comes with everything you need, which includes the instructions that has disposable gloves wrapped up inside, which is important. Then step A is the developer, step B is the color cream, step C is the fruit oil ampoule, and step D is a really moisturizing conditioner for after dyeing your hair. I'm going to assemble both of the colors so they will both be ready to go when I need them. So first I'm opening up the developer, and then step B is the color cream that has a really interesting opening device. You unscrew the top, then take the pink ring off, and then you can screw the top back on and it will go farther back and puncture open the seal, which I thought was pretty nifty. Then I'm pouring the entire tube of color cream into the bottle, and I've never seen anything like this last step, but there's a fruit oil ampoule that you add to the mixture to help maintain the strength of your hair while coloring it. And I am so bad at opening things, like it's not even funny. Sometimes I can't get something open, so I just had to go buy another one. But for this, I got some scissors to help. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this would be easy for anyone else. But anyways, now we have everything in the bottle that we need. So it's time to shake it and mix everything up. And now we're good to go. I'm gonna do the same thing with my second color so I can get both sides to start the development process at around the same time. And one important thing to note is that part of what makes this look successful is choosing two colors that go really well together. So my biggest tip for that is picking colors of the same intensity. So for example, I picked deep and somewhat darker colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. And then another good combo would be two pastel colors that complement each other or you could do two colors that have intense contrast if you wanna be bold, bold. You'll notice that once everything is mixed together, the colors start to appear as very light pastel versions of themselves. And this is normal, so don't let that throw you off. I find it so cool that you can just watch the bottle start to get darker once everything's mixed in. Like, look at how the teal gets darker in a matter of seconds right here. Magic. Now it's time for the fun part. I'm unbraiding my hair and taking out a small section at a time, starting from the bottom and then clipping the rest of my hair on the other side. And I'm doing purple on my left, so I'm starting out with that and applying it by squeezing the bottle onto my hair and then using my fingers to distribute it and make sure that everything is evenly saturated. Right now it looks like nothing's really happened to the color of my hair because the dye is just starting to develop right now. So next, I'm taking down another small section and doing the same process, making sure that I get everything nice and saturated. And now the color is starting to show up more and it will eventually get to the final purple color soon. I'm continuing to work my way up to the top of my head using the same method of squeezing the dye onto my hair and then using my fingers to make sure it gets all the way down to the roots and covers everything. I love using my fingers whenever I'm doing my hair on my own because it really helps being able to feel where everything is, even though I can't see it all, but especially when you're doing it on your own and there's no one around to help double check. But I'll show you how I do my own double checking routine in a second. But right now I have one section left before I get to the center center. So I'm very gently putting that on the other side while trying to get as little dye on that part as possible and only touching the ends of that section. Then hold your breath while you're doing that part until you've flipped over your final section. 
I'm very happy that my color didn't run on the other side, but if you are worried about that, feel free to use a more refined method or use saran wrap or something else to block out the color transfer on that side. This didn't worry me because the colors are very similar and pretty deep, so it wouldn't have been the end of the world. Once I get to the top, I'm being very careful and I'm actually using a dye brush this time to make sure I get a very precise application to the center part without going over onto the other side. And one way I like to do this is by using my phone and angling it downwards so I can see more of the top of my head while I have the mirror in front of me. I checked the back of my head using my phone and I found one patch of hair that needed more dye. So I always just check and fix and then check with my phone again until it looks good to me. And my tongue is blue right here because I was eating nerd's rope. I promise I did not eat the dye. Please do not eat the dye. Once I'm happy with that, I unbraid the other side and I start by applying the dye to the center part area so I can make sure I get the precision part out of the way. And then I can just enjoy the rest of the process. No sweat after that. For the side, I use my fingers because it's pretty easy to slowly feel my way to the center of my head. And since the other side already has dye on it, I'm not worried about contamination that much, but I still go really slowly to make sure. And this has been the easiest method for me throughout the years. So I flip that on the other side and continue to do the rest of my head using my fingers and making sure that everything is fully saturated like the other side of my head. And this is how my hair looked in the end after applying both of the colors. I am very happy with it and I made sure to double check with my phone again so I know everything looks good before I let it sit on my head for a while. And I left it in for another 20 minutes once I was done applying and checking and then it's time to rinse it out in the shower. So I did this one side at a time very gently starting with the blue and rinsing it until the water ran clear, then moving on to the purple side until that ran clear. Next, I'm coming in looking like a raccoon because my mascara dripped all over the place and I'm using the conditioner and finger combing it through my hair very gently to help moisturize. After letting it air dry, this is what it came out looking like. I'm super happy with how it turned out and I love how the colors complement each other. And that's definitely one of the biggest and most important things to figure out beforehand, making sure that you choose two colors that really do look good together. So that's it for today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check me out on all of my socials, which are linked down below, as well as the products that I used in this video. Also, if you guys do end up dyeing your hair, please send me pictures on Twitter because I always love to see what you guys come up with. But yeah, thanks so much for watching. I wish you all a happy, healthy life, and I'll see you in the next one.